Hey everybody, Raven here, and today I am super excited about this video, ladies and gentlemen, because what I have before you is amazing examples and pieces of Asian silver history currency and the ways that they use them. There are items right here from Vietnam, these two bars, and I'll go into a description about each one of them, talk about what they were and how they were used. This here is from China. It is known as Saddle Money. Very cool examples. Right here is a bangle bracelet that was actually used in um, different countries as currency and known as a nest egg from Thailand, Burma, and Laos. And then another example of a Vietnamese bar that could be actually from the 1300s. So we're going to get into this first type of bar right here. These were made during the late 1800s to the early 1900s, and these bars actually represent what's called a hang. That is a feeding trough used to feed animals. And so these bars were made to look like that, and they're called ninh bars. They're distinctively Vietnamese, or what used to be called anam. Um, it's a type of saisi. Saisi is a silver money that is made in the form of ingots and is used primarily in Asian countries for the opium trade of all things. Uh, silver merchants would present these to government officials for testing and determine denomination of what they were. And then the verification stamps were later stamped into the ingots to prove that they, what they were. And you might have somebody later that put this little pattern here to verify that it was silver. But that is what these bars were mainly about. These next ones here, known as Chinese saddle money, and they were made during the 1884 to 1914, so, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s, and they were heavily circulated in Yunnan, which is a southern province, uh, southwest province in China. Its unique uh, shape resembles a horse saddle and became known as saddle money and was originally used as a way to uh, hoard wealth but later became an ordinary measure of payment and circulated heavily in China, Burma, and Thailand into the 20th century. They were also referred to as tortoise or chair money, and they were primarily issued around 1884 by one person known as Chen Yongcheng, the owner of a prominent bank in the Yunnan province. That's why they were heavily circulated in that area. These ingots have six seals total, two inner and two outer, and the, the, the inner and outers are identical stamps, and then there would be two more that would be uh, the Asher marks from a Tong Fu Shing or a Feng Shin Yu. Uh, very, very cool pieces of history right here, and something that is just absolutely epic. The next thing that we have that I'm showing you here is the, uh, the Bengal bracelet. These are Popular in Thailand, Burma, and Laos. The silver break, uh, bangles were made in the 1800s. And they were used as a store of wealth or a family nest eggs. These uh, were also classified as currency and were valued by, art by their artistic qualities as well as the silver weight. But however, they weren't standardized and have no guarantee of the actual silver content. But this also beckons to things today like you know you can't leave uh, the United States with more than ten thousand dollars in cash or other countries uh, coming into the United States they don't let you carry that large amount of cash so you might see a person with a lot of gold uh, jewelry or uh, necklaces and rings and all sorts of stuff and think wow that person must really like jewelry when in actuality what they're doing is making sure that they can bring extra wealth into the country that they're visiting so they don't run out of money while they're there. And that is a cool practice that has been going on for quite a while, to be honest. Um, if you think about it, if you can only take $10,000 to a country and all of a sudden you're stuck there for a lot longer than you had budgeted for, this is a way to protect you and your family and to make sure that you have continued uh, money in your pocket to pay for goods and services and whatnot and as you know almost every country has a place where you can go and turn in silver and gold 
and get currency in return. Um, so it's actually a very smart way, again, to keep and hold on to wealth as well as be able to, you know, visit other countries and not be stuck. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people don't know about. So I wanted to really talk about that for a minute and let you guys know. This last bar here, which could be as old as the mid 1300s, is lap money, also known as a tiger tongue. And uh, its distinctive shape and size closely represented a tiger's tongue. The way that these uh, bumps and stuff go around this, they thought that it looked kind of like the uh, the, the curved bumps on a tiger's tongue. Um, they also had a double sucker dotted pattern on the ribs right here, as you can see. And this money had very special religious connection. It was donated on special occasions, mostly as an offering to monasteries and shrines, but it was also used as a way to trade currency. Um, you know, the very, very cool thing about all of this stuff here is the history that it represents and the way that people have always tried to find a way to hoard or build wealth in a way that can't easily be taken away from them. Again, you know, the bagel idea. Now, this thing here is just a beautiful piece of artwork and would bring a huge premium being that it is very artistic as well as having that silver weight. Uh, these bars here, you know, were used heavily because of the silver content and the history. Could you imagine what this bar bought over time and, well, nowadays has its current value in market just for being a nice antique piece, as well as these bars here, which surprised me when I looked this up to find out that these were mostly used for the opium trade. It kind of gives you an idea how different things were used throughout history and how still to this day people use silver and gold to make sure that they could hedge their future and have a nice bit of wealth built up for their family. If you like this type of video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't already because it helps us grow as a channel. And we can't thank you guys enough for all your support. Like always, please make sure to take care of one another. We'll see you real, real soon. Raymond Hawk Coins, have a great day.